Hello, this is Grandmaster Henry Danielson. The Polar Bear book, Volume 2, is on the stairways, and in connection with that, I would like here to bring an example from the new book, but also to answer some questions I received. Let's just jump into it after f4 and d5. Knight f3 and bishop g4. I showed this in an earlier video. And then I got the question. After e3 and knight d7, black's plan is crystal clear. He wants to exchange on f3 and play e5 with equalization. We don't like that. So we play h3. And after bishop captures f3, we capture back with the queen. Then came first question. What about e5, the gambit e5? Then I think white has to capture on d5. A real polar bear system player never runs away from any kind of challenge. Yes, after queen h4 check, we have to move the king to d1. And then we have a kind of romantic chess inspired by Steinitz, accepting the pawn and then hold tight for many moves to come. But the guy that asked me the question didn't like the position after castle long, because after f4 captures e5, he had seen a game played by Kramnik way back in 1990, in the old USSR. There his opponent, Oratowski, played queen e7, and after queen a5 and king b8, Kramnik here played knight c3. But Oratowski got serious contra play after knight captures e5. Now already if white plays d3, then simply knight c4 is drop, dropping a pawn. And with the king in the center dropping the pawn, that is no good business. But Kramnik is Kramnik, and even though he was under some serious pressure, then he won the game in move 35. I don't want to repeat knight c3 and uh, the guy that wrote me didn't like the position here after king b8. But now something very interesting. b3 is my suggestion. I played this in a blitz game long time ago on the internet and there happened knight captures e5 and after bishop a3 attacking the queen the queen has to move to f6. Here the queen is of course extremely active and pointing down to the rook on a1. But we capture on f8. Now he has to capture back black on f8. Knight g4 is a blunder because we can capture on g4 and when the queen captures on a1 then of course we have to protect the knight. And now the point after rook captures f8. It seems as if we just lost a rook for a bishop, but here we have a killer move. And the killer move is bishop a6. We are not only threatening queen b4 with a double threat on b7 and the rook on f8, but we are also threatening queen to b5. And of course, if black was to capture the bishop on a6 now, then queen b4 check is winning. So, uh, of course, this would be very difficult to find in a practical game. So after bishop captures f8, it seems that black has to capture back on f8. And first now we will we develop the knight on c3. Just see how much the white position has improved. The bishop on f8 is away, it's gone, and also the rook on d8 is now 
placed in a less active square. So now uh, we are actually threatening knight b5. It makes sense now to play knight c6, attacking the queen, gaining some time. Then we play queen c5, and after rook d8, we play bishop d3, blocking for the d-file, and then uh, we are ready for rook f1. Black has to do something very fast, otherwise he's lost his pawn down. So he has to play knight e5, and then a beautiful move, knight to b5, attacking a7 and c7. Then after knight captures d3, we capture back on d3, and we simply sacrifice the rook on a1, because after rook queen captures a1 with a check, and we move up to e2, then we are threatening a7 and c7. Only move is to move back the queen to f6 to protect, but then after queen captures a7 and king c8, then white is clearly better after rook c1. It doesn't help him to play c6 here. You can test this out with your computer program. I use Stockfish, I like that. But also Fritz 13 is, is uh, on my computer. Then uh, after king d7 here and rook captures c7, king e8 and queen captures sorry, rook captures b7, then white has a clear advantage, even though he is a rook down. But look at rook h8, it is totally sleeping. Here in a blitz game, of course, this is analysis I did earlier, but in a blitz game, my opponent played knight h6, this is a clear blunder, and after, after queen to c5, white is winning. I'm not going to show more here. So um, you see, after queen captures f3, e5 is interesting. And uh, white don't have to fear it. Then I got the question, uh, but after c6, then uh, we can't prevent e5 unless we play d4. Yes, but here we like to play d4, because black is not able to play knight f6 to e4. We will get to overprotect e4 before he come. You see, after knight f6, we can play knight d2, and after e6, then we can play bishop to d3, and now we have overprotected the square e4 with a good stone wall. Bishop e7, c3, and now black must be very careful not to castle here, because after g4 he will face a kingside attack. This is also going to be in the book. The clever listener watching here could get the idea, why not f5, and then to play knight f6 to e4. Then we have a doubled stone wall, but actually a double stone wall that is good for white, because he comes first with g4 and c4. And all this will be explained also in the book. I just want to mention for those of you that are new here, that knight g f6 uh, was answered with g4 in 1999 in a tournament in Schwerin, earlier East Germany. Uh, I think the tournament's name was Peter Mansion. Uh, a Grandmaster Tournament, and actually I won the tournament. And I played Thomas Luthers, and all this here was preparation. When I say all this, then I mean G4. Now E5 is not good. If, if you haven't seen my uh, earlier video, then you are welcome to go back. The point is that after E6 and D3, White can follow after with uh, E4 and an attack. The reason why I'm showing you this is that I found something beautiful here. After check and c3, black could also play bishop d6 without giving the check, it doesn't really matter. After bishop d6, then e4, and capture, capture, and here we are threatening e5, that's the reason why black plays e5. And now g5, knight g8 and f5, getting this space advantage. And uh, white is clearly better. But the funny part is that uh, all the white's pieces are still uh, sleeping, except the queen. 
and after h6 actually the best move is probably to play queen h5 here. Against Luthers I played h4 and uh, then uh, he played bishop e7, this is a mistake. Then I played queen to h5. But the funny part of it is now that I'm threatening bishop c4, so he has to pre prevent it with knight b6. And now I didn't see that f6 is immediately winning. And imagine a game of chess where you can win only by attacking with the queen and pawn in the opening spans. That is very seldom. You see, after g captures f6, then the main point is that we can play g6. We are threatening g captures f7, and he cannot protect f7, and the knight has no squares to move to. So he has to capture on g6, and then we capture back on g6. And when he played king d7, then we can play queen g7, winning the rook and the game. And if he prevent uh, queen g7 with king f8, then we just put some power behind the queen with rook g1, and then queen g7 next move winning. It's amazing. Unbelievable. No wonder I didn't see it in under the game, but uh, maybe if you will have this game here in the future, that is how you could win. But then I must m mention also that instead of h4 in this position, uh, then uh, white could play queen h5, which is stronger. And uh, actually after knight e7, there is uh, an, an attack again, but this time the bishop is used. Then after g6, we can immediately capture on f7. King captures f7, f captures g6. And uh, in one blitz game I played, then black played king g8. And then he has a lost position after g captures h6. Again, the queen and pawns are attacking. Knight f6 happened, and then h7, check, forcing him to capture on h7 now, because king g7 would be made immediately. So knight captures h7, and now a strong move, g7. Uh, and here again, he made a blunder, but the game is over. King captures g7, because now it will just be a forced mate. Black has to block the g4, c8 diagonal, and then we can checkmate him in two moves. So uh, you see that um, it's actually quite an interesting opening. And uh, this bishop g4 was a hard nut to crack in the beginning, because it just looked as a plain equalizer. But because of the move h3, and then after queen captures f3, white is in a situation where he can expand in the center with d3 and e4, or uh, on the king side with g4, and start a wing side attack. I hope this was a nice appetite for you, and I hope that you will go and buy my next book when it is available and on Amazon. Amazon.